YouTube, it's Maddie the Empty Nest Scrapper. Welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you stopped by. Today is a special segment because we have some special guests as requested by a subscriber. So today, as a special COVID is ending treat, I got to see my whole family and they have some questions for me about my crafting. And I'm gonna introduce you to their hands. So, first off, my husband's going to say hi. Hello. Hey, YouTube. There you go. And then both of my kids, come on in. Say hi. Hello, YouTube. Hello, YouTube. So, I get a little bit of flack because I just show my hands, but that's what I like. And I told them if they would come and do the video with me, they would only have to show their hands, too. <laughs> so... This segment was requested very recently by a subscriber, and it's kind of called, What is That Crafty Thing? And I asked my family to go around my room and look for things that they didn't know what it was. And um, on this segment, I'm gonna give them the answer. So whoever would like to go first, Pick one of your items, and I'll tell you what that crafty thing is. What was the thing that Dad picked? The juicer. Yeah, the juicer. Okay, this <laughs> exciting item, all the crafters know. What's that? Oh, that that's right. It, it holds like my stamps cleaner. Okay. So, this item is used to clean your stamps. Can I ask a question? Yes, questions why, are allowed. Why does your stamp cleaner have to be in that specific <laughs> right. container? Oh, that's a very good question. Thank you. It does have to be in this container. This is a salt keeper. So, it really is not a craft item. However, in order to keep this thing working, it's got to stay moist. So you need okay. something that closes, but not all the way. Okay. And that's why you need a salt keeper or some sort of weird spaceship <laughs> to, <I'm juicing. laughs> to a juicer <laughs> to keep your stamp chamois. Anyone next up for their question? Choose an item, put it in the center. I'll tell you what it does. Oh, good one, good one. What in the world is this, right? I mean, oh. uh, it's teeny tiny. <laughs> Somebody thought it was a fake cigarette. Out and it. no, I'm just gonna grab something here. This is just a scrap piece of paper. And I forgot to take something from the stash, but here's the perfect thing. Okay, let's say we wanna do some ink blending. I heard my family say those words. They know what ink blending is, but I'm not sure if they know that sometimes you want to blend something in a stencil. I don't need it, but thank you family. My family is trying to help me. So let's say I want to blend some ink and I want different colors. So, can you give me a clean one? One with uh, no ink on, or just another one that ha doesn't have color on it? I don't remember where they live. Oh, here. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. So, let's say I want to color in these stars from this stencil, but I don't want them all the same color. Now, my family member was exactly right. They pulled out, they heard me say ink blending, and they pulled out one of my blenders, and that's exactly what that does. But if I wanted to make some of these stars green, and uh, some of them purple and some of them pink, I can't really do that. I need a teeny tiny tool for that. So, you get some ink on your little tool and you make some of the stars pink and then you can flip it over, flip it over. and make some of the stars purple. And if you use this teeny tiny tool, 
then your colors won't mix. There you have it. Did, would you have guessed? No. No, no. no, it's a surprise. Okay, anyone who would like to pick the next item, feel free. The Bromo Seltzer. Bromo Seltzer or Mod Podge. So Mod Podge is likely one of the first items you ever picked up when you started crafting. And it is, it can be used as glue. It can be used as a sealer. Um, and uh, you just, this stuff lasts forever and ever. I will have this for like 40 years. Let's throw that away. So here's our Mod Podge. So all of the crafters, you all know what Mod Podge is. But if you have a craft and you want to seal over it and make it permanent, you throw some Mod Podge over, dries clear, and bing, bang, boom, your project will be sealed or glued if that's what you prefer. All right, moving along. What do you do with that after it's got the Mod Podge on it? You let it dry. Oh, this? Yeah. yeah. Um, I will have to clean that. The rake. Oh, <laughs> so this one, you guys, isn't that a good question? I know you think it's a good question. Thanks, Mom. So this one is going to be combined with somebody wanted to know what is this, right? You guys all know what this is, but I pulled out something to show you what this is because when you use it, then you need that. So let's get our items that we need together. So this here, family, is a die cutting machine. These are dies. Oh yeah. These are dies. And you put your dies on the plate. Oh, I'm missing a plate. Is it over there? Nope, uh, the next one. Yep. Thank you. Okay. You put all your dies on your plate. And it's slidey, right? It's slidey. That happens a lot. So you have your low-tech tape. So it doesn't slide all over the world. You tape it down. Uh, this one I could just stick under here and see if we can keep it in place. And you put it through the machine. When it comes out the other side, it's going to be cut out, I hope, possibly, may need to shim and go through again. Nope, it's cut out. Oh. So, the machine gets answered, and we'll also find out, so this little heart pops out fine. Oh. Mm -hmm. It's We've got a heart. But this thing is what what we crafters call an intricate die. Yep. And for an intricate die, this little snowflake, well, that can be stubborn. So, what do you do? Well, you gotta take your tool, this guy. Let's see if we can get him out. Well, <laughs> let's see if it did. Maybe it did. Maybe it did. Maybe it didn't. 
I haven't tried it with this die before, but without this little tool, you could be there forever trying to get this guy baby out. So you just put it on the pad, try to take it apart, and a couple of pieces are stubborn. You use your fingers, you use whatever you can, but it's a tool to help get the little tiny pieces out of this die. Uh -huh. And there it is. So that's what this crazy thing is. What's its name? The Sizzix thing. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody got one of those tools? The Sizzix thing. Okay. Who's next? Questions. What is this thing? Ah, uh, okay. I took out a couple things to demonstrate that. Yep. Correct. Let's get block. the rest. Oh. It is. It is? I didn't know. Well, <laughs> store it up. Okay. So, question was, what on earth is this? There's too many out here. This is a blender for alcohol ink. These are alcohol inks. And what I got in here, what do you think's in there? Alcohol. alcohol. There you go. Alcohol. Oh, I don't know who picked this item. I did. But they all go together, so I'm going to demonstrate. I'll need that back. <laughs> <laughs> so, you drop your alcohol ink in. And I just picked two colors to make it easy to show. Right? So, you could mix it around with this, yeah? Mm. Oh. And see what it does, but you also could blow it <laughs> and, that doesn't and seem nearly see, efficient. yes, but it makes a different look. It does. It's not about efficient, it's about what do I want it to look like? It does look different. Very what different. do I want it to look like? So sometimes people like to do it this way. You take your alcohol ink and you put it directly on your pad. Oh. And you do it with both colors. And then you just see what you get because we're just playing. There you go. Ooh, that looks pretty cute. That's pretty nice. cool, right? Yeah, right. And you know, when this is dry, maybe I'll make a card out of that. Maybe it'll be something when it grows up someday. So, yeah, that's what this stuff is. There's all sorts of funky stuff. The alcohol so, Now, you gotta clean that thing? What you, thing? The thing that, the, the stamp, whatever, the, the push it down. This? Yeah. Push it down. This is now trash. Really? Yes, yes, sir. That's why crafting is so expensive because some of the things are not reusable. So this is now trash and this will be used uh, again. Make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's put this aside. This stains, so okay. leave it leave it be. Leave it be. Yeah, beautiful colors though. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Probably paid for Okay. Probably bought them for Hanukkah last year. Does, uh, <laughs> okay. Does anyone have a pick for oh, next up? Actually. Okay, D-spatula. 
So it really is a spatula. And you guys know that. So I forgot to grab something to show that about. And here we go. So let's see what I did with the stencil. Anybody see where the stencil? Oh, I think I put it here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's go back to our stencil and let's grab some young person who can open this for me. Yeah. It's open. It's open. Thank you. Okay. So what we do with this spatula is we use that for some of our paste. I just pulled some wrong thing. I thought I pulled some texture paste, which is this guy. And you just take your same stencil, that'll work fine. Pull it out, put it through. Oh. And you need a spatula for that. There's no other way around it. Uh, there are a few different shapes. And this stuff will dry with a little texture. And if you're making a card and you want to have a starry night and you want it to look a little bit special you can throw it through a stencil you can color your stencil any color you want oops so i just smushed that but there you go for the spatula that's what we do with that this one's done right Okay, so questions for new items. Oh, this one is cool. This, they don't make anymore. This one I use for scrapbooking. And what I like to do in my scrapbooks, if I can, is uh, make it interactive so that when you uh, have more pictures on a page than, than you could really fit, I will make some slots and, uh, and put in little extra sleeves. And to do that, I need to punch a little hole, just like that, uh. and that. And then I'll take a knife, slice it end to end, and that's where I will put my sleeve. And that's all there is about that. How we doing? Are we getting the questions answered, family? Yes, we are. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So this is everybody's favorite. I know people have a love-hate relationship with it, but it's the advanced tape glider. And it is the most used item in my craft room. Bing, bang, boom. Tape. What? What were you expecting? It's a tape glider. It glides tape. I didn't see any tape on there. Come back. Oh, yeah, Take a point. closer look. I will put it up to the camera. Double-sided tape. Touch. Nope, on the table. Oh, uh -huh. there it is. See that? See that, everybody? You know, there's the tape. So. I thought you were to load it with something. I thought it, I, I, it wasn't I I do it. load it with something. Tape. <laughs> oh, that's a good point. When it runs out, I load more tape. I kept pressing the button. What is the yeah. iron used for? <laughs> okay, everybody, this is the iron, right? Doesn't it look like an iron? But it's a punch. As uh, 
as the family stated earlier, they sort of knew that. This one is a large circle punch. Got a now I got a circle if oh. I can get it out. I'm just trying to be quicky, quicky licky about it. This would have been a nice circle if I didn't rip it and just use partial page. But that's what my punch does. How we doing folks? Doing great. Anybody have a next pick? Oh, is this? this is important. Okay, if I'm making a scrapbook and I put down a picture in the wrong spot, where's that tick? Let's pretend that's my picture. I've taped it down. It's in the wrong spot. This is not where I want my picture. Well, you need a doohickey. There you go. Uh, and there you go. So what's the name of the doohickey? Yeah. Uh, made in China. <laughs> 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 so this is a creative memories item that I purchased from my friend Debbie. And before pandemic, we would go to her house regularly. Now we meet uh, over Zoom. Um, a couple times a week, but uh, there's a creative memories all-purpose tool. So uh, if you have a creative memories representative, then uh, they can help you out with that. Okay, well, we know that's a toothbrush, and what do you use it for? So this toothbrush cleaning something. is something that I use, and I pulled something out to demonstrate with. That's okay, you cool. Um, let me grab something behind you. And I pulled out as much as I could. I just had, okay. So, here's like a background I made that, you know, maybe I will make some sort of something out of it someday. I'll add some stuff and it'll be fun. So this is just some paint that I'm trying to get out if it hasn't dried up already. All right, let me take a newer paint because this ain't happening for me. Uh, here we go. This is a good one for it. It's a much newer paint. Okay, so you pour out some paint. Ooh, a lot of paint, lots of paint. You take your toothbrush, and if you want some splatters, you just oh. create some splatters with a toothbrush. I know it looks like a toothbrush, and that's because it is a toothbrush. So this paint is really not splattering too good. Not sure why, but that's what it's used for, to splatter paint and, you know, Create some interest in your background. Oh, there's all the splatters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I missed the paper. But uh, lots of times we just try to so cool. mm -hmm. do different effects so, with uh, items from around the house. You have to throw the toothbrush out now because it has that paint on it? No, I wash it. It's watercolor, oh, right. you know. Yeah. How many toothbrushes do you think she's going through? Yeah. So, uh, put this aside, honey. Thank you. All right. You want to know why I keep water on my table? There you go. Sometimes. But we are getting there. We are getting there. But it's, this is just watercolor. It's the alcohol that is uh, gotta be careful with. But the rest of this stuff is really not a tough thing to clean. Everything pretty much wipes up with water. Okay. So, 
we're pretty much winding down. We're doing pretty good. I have one more machine to show. Ah, everybody's favorite, the bone folder. Bone, bone Look, folder. the bone folder. All right. Okay. Boom. Folder. Oh, I picked that up. <laughs> <I saw> it. <laughs> okay. So, let's say we want to make a card. And we want it to oh, fold. Wow. So, let's see. I don't really know how long this is i'm just gonna pick a spot and see what happens i create a crease and then you would think that you would fold along the crease line but that doesn't work well you have to do it the other way so there are no cracks bone folder is how we make our card base gotta bone fold it you do it's absolutely the only way to go the, the only better. way to go. It's the bone folder. Huh. Got some weight to it. Okay. Uh, anybody see anything that they chose that... Uh, oh, the black thing. This is just the pokey tool. I don't know what happened with the punch, but if you cannot, you, it's retractable. So it's got a sharp end. Anything you need to move around with precision or poke out some little holes that uh, didn't get pierced in your Gemini Junior or whatever tool you're using. I want a baby wipe. Pop it. Mm -hmm. Somebody moved my baby wipe. It was me. It was you. So I think the last thing was the machine what machine this one i didn't want them both on the table at the same time there was a question about this yes yes i don't usually pick full size because um you know this is so much easier for me i don't make huge items so this is the mini mink. Turn it on and heat it up. You think things gonna heat up? You betcha. Hmm. And what this thing does is foil. Oh, it's the foiler. It is the foiler. My hands are a mess. The toothbrush really messed me up. Toothbrush was a problem for me. All right. I don't want to get this filthy. Wound on my sheets. Okay. So, these are some toner sheets that you use with your foiler. If you have a if you have a um, printer that can print this out, uh, my printer doesn't do that. So we're heated up already. We're in time. So you need some foil. You do. You need a sheet. A carrier sheet that comes with the mink. It's the carrier sheet. Okay. And you take out your foil. Okay, somebody with dexterity, take out the foil.
No good. It's a toughie. I may not have used that color yet. Ah, thank you. Okay. And I picked just this pink color because we're going to foil some flowers. And if I want to use that someday, I will. I would think that pink would be okay for flowers, and I'll figure it out. So we just cut a piece of foil to the proper size for the sheet. This has to go back in there. Okay, so we put our sheet. in the carrier and just pop it on through you just pop it through got something else over there i want yes. so you can buy all different kinds of transfer sheets to make all different kinds of items that you want. Usually I take a lot more care, but today I'm just rushing through to try to see, I see some bubbles. I'm not sure this came out great. Throw it through again, just in case. And maybe that'll flatten out. And that might be, is that our last item? Is there any more? I don't think so. No, I think it might. Oh, the snow pen. Oh, I forgot about that snow pen. That is the snow pen. The Minnesota guy knew about the snow pen. Mm, it's a snow pen. Okay. So, it does look like I just threw it in too quick. I've got a lot of bubbling going on, but we'll see what happens. So, Let's turn this baby off, put it aside, and do a reveal and see how it came out. Wow. That one was pretty impressive. It's fun, right? Wow. <laughs> so I have all different colors, right? I have rainbow, I have tie dye, and there we have a foiled sheet. You oh, can wow. pass that one around and show it to everyone. That was the most impressive That's one so magic. far. So I asked for, I made, I, I have a card that I made by foiling that I thought I would show. And uh, then it can help you get an idea of what you do with that. So this is, this is a card I made for a graduation and I foiled the background. Oh, wow, yeah. Mm -hmm. So here, you guys can see, this is the example I'm sharing and you guys can see. Steven, can I have the blue paper that I did one demo on? Yeah because we're gonna do some snow pen on it. And snow that, pen. I believe, is the very last item to show. So, have Not you guys good. out there got yourself a snow pen at home? Thank you. Oh, put that aside, my hand's dirty, and I don't wanna ruin it. Okay, so, this is the snow pen. Everybody have one? This is my first one. I just used it recently. You shake it up. And the thing to do that makes it work best is lay it out uh, and close it up, right? So what you need is a paintbrush because otherwise, it has a mind of its own. It goes wherever it really wants to go. But if you use the paintbrush, 
and you want to like make some clouds. Oh, oh that was with the clouds. Mmm. You can. You can make some clouds. You could pile it up high if you want it thicker. And the more you pile on, the thicker it'll get. Mm -hmm. But this is not the effect. Right now it just looks like milk. Yeah. And the paint pen doesn't make milk. It makes puffy stuff, but you need a heat tool. Mm -hmm. And you have to heat up your heat tool. This is my heat tool, I use the Wagner. And if you let it heat up um, for a little bit before you hit your project, it'll work a little bit better. Sometimes it takes a little time. Um, I like to work on this glass mat because you could use your heat tool right on it. And there it goes. Wow. It's puffing up. Oh. Puffing up. Oh. Wow. And there's the magic of the snow pen. So you could see oh, if you wanted so to make snow that would be a really cool thing to do i picked that dark blue paper so you could see it you guys can see it wow yeah. there you go i made a cloud on yes. daddy's anniversary card because it was a very cool thing to play with yeah. and that's the whole point playing with the cool things. And so I thank my family for joining in with me. I hope I answered all your questions. Sure Everybody did. hands in for the big bye-bye. Bye-bye, YouTube. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, YouTube. Hope bye -bye. you are seeing your family too. See you next time.